waiting for everybody to show up. Hi, D. Hi, Deborah. I'm trying to see what lighting's going to work out here. Hi, guys. So some of you might know that I did a little bit of an unboxing video the other day with some new things I got from the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog, which, by the way, goes live in just a few days, September 5th. Um, so um, keep an eye out for that. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Roberta. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Teresa. Wow, there's a lot of you guys on. Oh, that's right. Tomorrow's a holiday. No problem, Roberta. Did you have it to peruse it? All right. So here's the catalog. I don't think I'm allowed to show it to you yet. So I don't want to get in trouble and break any rules. But um, what I wanted to show you was a couple of things. So I stamped out the ink colors that I have. I just kind of swatched them out. So this I do this for a number of reasons. Number one, so I can see exactly what the color looks like when I stamp it out. And number two, so I don't buy the same color twice. Um, so these are all of the colors here. So just to give you a little tidbit there. A um, couple of things that I'm going to be using. I think what I want to do is just try to throw some cards together today. I am going to be using the catalog for some inspiration. But this is the photopolymer set I want to use, which is called the Merry Christmas to All photopolymer set. And it is a two set of photopolymer stamps. Let me get a piece of paper here. Okay, so here you can see there are very nice sentiments. I like the font. I like the size of them. And then we have some scripty ones here. So we have Mary. We have Happy. We have this little swirl. Wishing you peace and love all year long. Um, UA, so cheer, wishes, very merry. You guys can see all of those. And then on the second pay, second set that comes with it, um, it's a little more designy. So you have May the Beauty of the Season, Fill Your Heart with Joy, Holidays, Christmas, this little like frame box, some more little swirls there, some little, um, what do they call those? Is it like holly leaves? So that, but what I really liked about this, if you get it as a bundle, are the dies. So let me show you guys those. And this is called the Merry Christmas Thinlet Dies. And if you get it as a bundle, you save, I believe it's 10%. But I love the size and the scripty font of these. And then you have the little frames that match. So happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And you can use these in, conjun in conjunction with the stamps or you can use them separately. Now, I am probably going to use these, but I'll show you a tip in case I forget to bring it up. When using these intricate dies, the best thing that I have found for adhering them is to put adhesive on the back of your paper before you run it through your die cut machine and then cut it out so that when you pull this off, it will then become a sticker and already have the adhesive on it. And it's less likely to tear. Um, these are very thin. So um, that's the best advice I can give you when using these kinds of dies. They also look awesome when you use like a metallic paper, metallic cardstock. So we will probably be using those. I have some various inks and colors out. I have the new um, swirls and curls textured embossing folder. So I'll run that through. Um, this is the regular embossing folder. It's not a 3D one, but I really like the little designs on there. So we'll be using that. And then I just have some various colors of cardstock out, some inks out. And then this paper is just amazing, this DSP paper. Let me show you guys this. Go through it again real quick. So what I like about the DSP is that they tell you on the packaging the name of the coordinating colors. 
So you have on here, Call Me Clover, Cherry Cobbler, Crumb Cake, Garden Green, Real Red, Shaded Spruce, and Whisper White. So those colors of inks or cardstock will match this pattern paper. And this paper is just so beautiful. It's very, like, this is like, you can see I cut some off already, but it's, you know, it's, it's like a real, like, holiday setting there. And then the next side also has a design. So this is just some red and black stripes. These are felt stockings that they took pictures of. So it's not a drawing. It's an actual picture of felt stockings. Come on, camera, zoom in there or focus. Let me see here. There we go. So they're actual tiny little felt stockings that they took pictures of. Um, and I believe this is the backside. So nice green star paper. This one has little pine cones on it. I don't know if you can see that. But they're tiny little pine cones. And then the back side is this nice bokeh paper. These are photographs of light bulbs. And a green distressed looking paper. Here's some more of that photographic shrubbery with the bells and the lights. And some plain polka dots. And I think this one's my favorite. These cool little glass ornaments. And it just has this red poinsettia paper. Although this is cool too. And it's large enough that you could actually probably cut this out and layer it. So, as I said, I've cut up some of the paper just to save us hopefully a little bit of time. And I'm just going to real quick see what kind of cards I can slap together here. If you guys want to play along with me. I have some card bases already ready to go. I have my adhesive and my stamping blocks out. So I wanted to start with some of this paper here. And I'm going to run this green piece through. I think this is, what color is this? I think this is shaded spruce. So I have not really started my Christmas cards yet. I know. Look, there's a little line down here. I never noticed that before. I wonder if that's on the other ones. So you can line your paper up straight. Check that out. Look, we're both learning something here. I wonder if that's new for this year, but there is a straight line across there so you can line your paper up. Normally, I kind of butt it up against the top here, but that's pretty cool. I'm going to run this through my Gemini Junior. Let's just try two cutting plates here. I don't think that was thick enough. Very, very slight impression. I'm going to run it through again with the magnetic shim. I moved my paper. All right, let's try that again. Sherry, you had you didn't start either, huh? I'm hoping this pattern paper will make it go faster for me. Look at that. That is so pretty. You see the detail in that? Well, come on, girls. Get your stuff out. Let's start gluing cards together here. So I'm going to start with my card base. I'm going to glue some of this shrubbery paper onto the background. So they're A2 size and then I cut this down to five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm just going to use my Tombow Mono Glue. I do like this glue because it does give you just a few seconds to wiggle it around. Um, I've, I've started using the May May glue and I love that glue too. That one is just like, once you have it in place, it is not going anywhere because I don't really have an idea what I'm doing today. I'm just kind of winging it. I want that extra wiggle time in case I change my mind. <laughs> Sherry says we're all slackers. 
Yes, I will agree with you, Sherry. I had a great day with my kids today. I do have to work tomorrow just for a few hours. Um, but I took my kids out, finished their school shopping. One is in school. Leah finished her first week of kindergarten today, uh, this week, and she's been doing great with it. Um, my son starts seventh grade Tuesday at a brand new school. So he seems to be okay with the idea of starting over again. So I don't know. This is just some um, stamping up red ribbon. Now this is not the satin ribbon that's in the book. This is the cotton ribbon, which I didn't look up if it's still available or not, but use what you have. And I am not great with ribbon, so we're going to see how I'm going to make this work. And took the kids to a little lake today, and we did some fishing. The only one who got any fish was Leah. She, she beat us both out. She got a little fish. Let's see here. I'm just going to glue that on there because I think it looks good. So what are you guys doing tomorrow? Is everybody having like big barbecues, end of summer fest? Working on Christmas cards. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give that a second to glue down there. Angela's working. I'm only working a half day tomorrow, so I'm, I can't complain. I'm going to cut some of these dies out. Let's see here. I have some red paper here. Family barbecue. Let's see. I've just cut a two inch piece of red cardstock here and I have some double stick adhesive. And you can use anything that you have. You can use Elizabeth Craft Designs. You can use Stick It, whatever you have. Some score tape. Oh. These are the things I stock up on when I go to the stamping shows and the crafting shows because you can't just go into the store and buy a roll of score tape. So when I when these shows come to town, I stock up on this stuff. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain in our area, and so there's a lot of small towns around here that the creeks have, like, overflowed, and there's been a lot of flooding. This summer was not a great summer. It was, like, way too hot, and then all of that rain. It's like, all right, just get the fall. And, yes, I am a pumpkin latte person, so I am happy that pumpkin latte's back. I don't often drink coffee, but pumpkin latte, that is my... My guilty pleasure. All right, so all I've done is taken that red cardstock and put the double sided adhesive down. Now I'm going to run my die cuts through here. So let's do let's do Merry Christmas. Roberta says, mm, me too. Pumpkin everything. Yes, I agree with you. Oh, I hear Xavier running down the steps, so he'll probably come bombarding in here. I told him today I'm going to go to Ikea and buy all new furniture for my craft room. And he's like, yeah, and then we won't. He said, uh, like, I won't have a paycheck or something. So he was the voice of reason for me today. <laughs> all right, so I'm just putting this on my cutting plate. And then I'm going to run it through the machine. So 
magnetic shim. Hopefully I didn't shift that too much. Then I have my other cutting plate and the top. I don't think anything's sticking out in any weird way, so we'll see here. Yeah, Angela, my Ikea is a little over an hour away. And I recently, well, last year, traded my truck in. And now I have an SUV. And I could fit way more stuff in my truck. You know, those big Ikea boxes. All right, so here we go. And that die cuts like butter. Came right out. And we can pick out, oh, let's use our new tool. You guys can order this starting September 5th. Let me pull this guy out. All those little pieces poke right out. Okay, so that one's done. Let's look at this one. Yes, can I help you? Hi. You want to say hi to all the the fans? No. Xavier wants to know what we're going to give away for 4,000 subscribers because he's my, what did I say you were today? You're know. like my YouTube director, right? Yeah. And he said, Mom, you're almost at 4,000 subscribers, so you have to do a giveaway soon. What are you going to give away? So we're going to have to find some stuff to give away. All right. All right. So now we have these beautifully die cut and they're ready to be stuck down because they're basically like stickers at this point. So we'll be able to put them down on the card. So we could even very simply... Just take either one of these and put them down on there. I feel like we need something else on here. Hmm. I'm going to cheat and look at the catalog. Oh, they put some vellum down. That's a great idea. I'm going to grab a piece of vellum here. Okay. Hold on, guys. I am grabbing some vellum, if I could find it. <laughs> Isn't that just paper? It's just paper. It's all paper, Xavier. There is some vellum. That's pretty. Okay, we'll just cut some of that down. I'm totally casing this out of the book, guys. Like. All right, so I'm going to cut this down a little smaller. I'm going to cut this down to five by three, three quarters. Let's see here. Come on. There we go. This paper is so thin. Three and three quarters. This is just your everyday run of the mill vellum. Nothing special here. All right. So we can put that down on there, and you'll still be able to see the design behind there without it clouding too much of our image. So. Do you think we should round the corners? They use the new punch in the catalog. I did not get that punch yet. I'm just going to use a regular old corner rounder.
Yeah, I don't mind buying the furniture. It's exactly right, girls. Putting, finding someone to put it together. And that stuff, once you put it together, it is very difficult to get apart. Hi, Lizzie. Lizzie, I am ashamed to tell you that I used to be a huge scrapbooker. And I take a billion pictures of my kids every day. And now everything goes on Facebook. So now I feel like I'm an electronic scrapbooker. And I haven't done any scrapbooking in the longest time. Everything just goes into card making. So my kids are to the point now where they're like, why are you making us take pictures when you're not even scrapbooking us anymore? So, oh, well. I read a beautiful quote the other day and it said, um, someday your kids will only have pictures. Make sure that you are in them. What a nice quote. Okay, so I think what we'll do is attach the Merry Christmas on the vellum. Maybe put some ribbon down and then we'll be done with this one. What do you think? Is that too simple? We want them to be simple because we have to make 50 Christmas cards and it's September. All right, now here's going to be the little complicated part. Getting this out of here without, here we go, all that adhesive. So we're going to gently pull up the tops here. And you want to be kind of delicate about it. Where's our scraper tool? Let's use that. Oh my, this is so cool. I love this thing. Look at that. Now my fat fingers aren't in the way. Like a little spatula, getting all that adhesive off of there. All right, we have the Mary. So let's see if we can tack this down without it going all over the place. Vellum is very forgiving, so if you don't like where it's at, you can pick it up and move it. And then I'm going to take this rounded end with the lid on it and just use it to burnish it in place. And all that's doing is flattening all those bubbles that got put in there from the die cutting and the adhesive and adhering that to the vellum. That looks pretty cool. Then we'll put Christmas down here. So let's rip this out. The problem is I should have used one continuous piece of adhesive and I used two pieces. So the top part is removing fine, but the bottom part of the adhesive is trying to remain intact to the die. I should have just did one piece. So my tip, <laughs> use one piece of adhesive instead of lining two up. It's not that bad though. It really does come out of here pretty easily. This little tool is great. It's like a little spatula. It's going right in and pulling that backing right off for me. I don't have to worry about sticking my fingernails in there. And I think there's just one little piece here. There we go. All right, here's a question. Do you make nicer cards for some people on your list and your not so pretty cards send to other people on your list? Be honest. Oops, that just popped out. <laughs> Deborah says yes.
I think we find that some people appreciate our cards and our hard work a little more than other people do. So I think we try to send our really nice cards or make, you know, the ones that we spend a little extra time on, a little extra bling bling on and send those to people that are really special in our lives. And then the other ones, it's like, okay, here's a stamp. I colored it in. Here you go. <laughs> All right. So that's not too bad. So now we're going to do um, adhere the vellum down. So now we can take our glue and put it in the spots where the vellum is covered by the words. So that way you're not going to see it. This is a, the vellum that I'm using is, I got this at an art store. It's just 25% um, vellum, 50 sheet pad. So it's not super thin, but it's not real thick either, but it covers, I think it has nice coverage. But use whatever vellum you have. And I'm like I said, just putting this glue behind the die cuts here so that we don't have it exposed anywhere. And I know it looks kind of simple now, but what you can do is just get a lot of your base cards started and then go in later and add your gems and your jewels and your, your nouveau drops and things like that. Now for ribbon, I am terrible at tying ribbon. So my friend's husband made me this little thing and I'm going to show you guys it. And maybe you have candy husbands, but thank you, Rick, for making this. My friend Kim. So I want to show you guys the dimensions here. This is just a block of wood. And it looks like it was about six inches there by three and a half. So six by three and a half. And he just drilled a couple of holes. They're equal distances apart. They are about a quarter inch apart. And then he has these little dowels that fit into here. And all you do is you tie your ribbon and the, the further apart your dowels are, the larger the ribbon is. But I'll just show you how easy it is. There's also a fork method I've seen on YouTube, which is basically the same thing. So you just take your ribbon, you wrap it around, you put it through underneath. Someone is calling me. We're not going to answer that. And you just tie it. Wait till you guys see how cool this bow is. Because I cannot tie bows. I suck at it. Now we just pull the dowels out. And he put a little storage spot on the end here for them. So they're out of the way. And now I have this perfectly tied bow. That I can come off the edges. And I can just use glue dots or... Um, glue to glue this on. So I can put that right there. How cool is that? Right? So, all right. So I'm going to say that's card one. I will probably put some diamonds or something on that one later. Some gems. All right. Let's do this guy here. And I think for this one, I want to stamp out a little sentiment. So I have some whisper white paper here. Let's use the new stamp sets. So on this one, I just have my card base. I have that um, shaded spruce run through the swirls and curls embossing folder. And ooh, I'm already going to do the inside with this big sentiment. I normally don't do the inside of my cards until like the very end. And then I just go through and stamp all of them like assembly line 10 cards are all going to get the same inside so i'm going to do this one in the shaded spruce so it matches the outside lizzie no he's just very handy and he made one for his wife and one for me one year so that's why i gave you guys the dimensions um i'll ask him but i don't know if he's gonna want to make a hundred of them <laughs> all right so since this is a brand new stamp i want to show you guys it is beating up a little bit um 
that's only because these are brand new stamps and I have not cleaned them yet. That's totally normal. So I'm just going to stamp that off on my stamping grid paper here just a couple times. And you can see it does stamp beautifully. I just want to make sure that I have all of that residue off from the stamp making process. Angela says she's got the Crafter's Companion Ultimate Tool and it has a bow maker similar. So there you guys go. Hello, Gwen. That's what we do here. We share info. All right, so I'm just going to stamp the inside of this quick. And again, this is Shaded Spruce, brand new color. And these are spongy pads. So we're just very going to carefully tap, tap, tap. You do not have to dig into that ink pad. The, that's why I love Stampin' Up! ink pads. They just give you full coverage the first time. You don't have to continually go in and fight a felt pad. Look at that. So pretty. So now the inside color matches the outside color, but we need to put something on the outside here. I think something simple will work. And if you guys did not get a stamp chamois yet... I don't know what you're waiting for. This thing's awesome. It might look dirty, but it's not dirty. And it's cleaning my stamps so easy. So let's see here. What should we do? Let me just cut down a little piece here. Angela, you have to try it. It's beautiful ink. Even if you just start with one ink pad, um, it's dye ink, so it soaks right in and it dries very quickly. The pads are spongy. If you've used Catherine Pooler ink pads, Catherine Pooler, um, she, um, her, she used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator forever ago. So um, she, when she broke off and did her own line. She mimicked the sponginess of the Stampin' Up! ink pads. So very, very similar. All right, so I just cut a little piece of Whisper White here. I'm probably going to cut this down some more, but I just want to see what we can stamp out and then put on here. I don't want to overshadow this background too much because it is so pretty. Let's use, how about this Mary Merlot? This is a new, like, it, it really does look like Merlot. It's a, it's like a, a wine color, red wine color. So let's do this. And... We'll do the Mary Scripty font here in this Merlot color. I'm just going to do it down at the bottom. So pretty. Yeah, Angela, ink is addicting. I have distress inks, distress oxides. I have... Stampin' Up, I have um, Lawn Fawn, Hero Arts, Catherine Pooler. So they all have different colors. They all have different pros and cons. And you find your niche and you use what, what you have. So um, definitely try them out and see which ones you like. There are inks you're going to try that you don't like. So I have got my Stamparatus Friday. Love it. We'll be trying their inks when I save some money. When I get some money. Oh, do you have one? I did not get the Stamparatus, Lizzie, and I'll tell you why. I have two Misty's and the Tim Holtz tool. I think the Stamparatus is awesome from what I've seen with having the two doors and the price point is amazing. So if I did not have the other um, stamping tools, then I would definitely be getting one of those. Um, I really like the fact that it has the two doors and you can stamp multiple things when you're doing multiple stamping. I just did a stamp layering series, which I'm not done with. Um, but that Stamparatus is a really good idea, and it combines all of the things from the Misty and from Tim Holtz, and um, it's awesome. I really do like it. But no, I do not have one because, like I said, I have those other ones. All right, for this Christmas, I think I'm just going to use the Print Christmas in that same color instead of the Scripty. 
and I'm going to try to line this up. And then I think I will, let's see here. Let me grab a little frame die here and we'll just cut a little square frame out here and then glue that to the card. Angela, that's why I joined. <laughs> I did it just so I could get the discount and then you hope that you get enough people to order from you. Um, I really only have two my, of my best stamping friends that order stuff from me. Um, I get once in a while orders off of my YouTube channel, but it's basically just me and my friends. Um, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to be able to see the new products before everybody else does. And you get the little bit of a discount. All right. I'm just going through my dies here. And if you're part of a good group, um, it makes it even more fun. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Alicia from um, Crazy Paper Chick is my upline, and her upline is Dina Rico. So um, it's a. I was like celebrity stamping shocked when I found out. All right, so I may have underestimated myself or overestimated myself, I should say, because now. That's okay. I can put a little swirl there. All right. I'm going to run this through the die cut. It's just a, a stitched frame die. I'm going to put a little bit of post-it tape on there so it doesn't move. And we'll put one of those little fancy swirls on here. we go. We'll put a little swirl on there. And then again, we can put some pearls or some gems on there to spruce it up. And I think I'll do the swirl in the green, in the shaded spruce color. Let's see. I can't figure out which is better. The Okay, let me read. I'm trying to read the comments here. Uh, Consider what I did, Angela. I've been thinking about it, T. Deborah. I did too. Good morning. Hello, Natalie. Um, D, it is tough because the, the minimum is you have to sell 300 a quarter or you have to spend 300 a quarter. So that is a lot of money to spend. So if you just want to join and get the discount, um, I can look it up for you. You can go on my Stampin' Up! webpage and I'll link it for you. Um, but you have to meet the minimum, right? And if you're going to join and in three months you don't make it. They do give you a little bit of a grace period too, depending on when you join. Like your first three months, they don't penalize you. Um, and then after that, they tell you where you're at um, in sales. So if you have a lot of friends that don't have a, a demonstrator, um, you can get that $300. This time of year is the best time of year to join, in my opinion, because of the new products, because everyone wants to make Christmas cards and the holiday, um, the holiday book is packed full of a lot of stuff. Um, and you can try it out. Last time I was in, I was in for three years and then I left for about two years and recently just joined back up. Um, and my friends and I have been buying so much stuff out of the new catalog and the holiday catalog that I'm good for right now. We'll see where I'm going to be towards the end of the year. I might end up dropping again. So you just have to try it out. It's, it's the same re request for our, a hobbyist as it is for somebody who's selling it full time. There's no difference. So you got to be at $300 in sales per quarter. 
Look at that. Simple, right? But cute. I have some snail adhesive here. I'm just going to use to stick that down. So I'm not taking away from that beautiful background. And I, like I said, I will go back later and throw some, some bling on there. I'm going to do this one again. Ooh, that's pretty too. I like the other side better though. If you guys go through the holiday catalog, and like I said, it will be live September 5th, and you want to see something, I did get a lot of stuff. I will link my unboxing video. Um, if you want to see me make cards or show demonstrations of certain things, I'll be happy to do that. I have the Alpine Sports Thinlets, the Blizzards Thinlets die, and the Winter Wood set. I'm really anxious to get into this one and work with it, so... And if you didn't get your hands on this one, Blended Seasons, this is supposedly going to be a limited edition, I believe. So this is a really cool set that you're getting. These beautiful flowers, they're very large, so it'll be easy to color those in. And here's some nice fall leaves, some nice holly here. And again, some cute sentiments. Here's a nice Merry Christmas sentiment here. So this is a two-set stamp set called Blended Seasons. And if you did any purchasing last month, hi, Melanie. Hi, Natalie. Natalie's in Australia. Now, Natalie, is it your winter there? I understand Natalie 100%. I'm my one best customer. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can stamp on this vellum. Let's see how we can do here. Let's see how we do. That little swirl. I cleaned it and put it away already. Let me try this little, let's try this little holly leaf. Angela, there's no shame in joining, getting your discount, getting the stuff you really want and getting your discount and then dropping out. It's not that big of a deal. People come and go, you only have to um, wait. I think it's six months once you drop out before you can sign back up again. So it's not that big of a deal. Natalie in Australia says they have just started spring, but it feels like winter. Yeah, I know their seasons are opposite our season. So we're going into fall. Although today was a nice warm day. And I am just going to get my heat gun and heat this little stamped image up before I figure out if we're going to use this vellum on there. I can see that it's still wet right in the middle. I don't want to overheat it because I don't want the vellum to curl. For anyone just joining us, thank you for joining. I'm just playing around with some of the new holiday items that are coming out with the Stampin' Up! catalog. Um, they are going to go live September 5th. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. So we can stamp on it if we're really careful. Maybe I'll just do something simple on this one. The one that says holiday wishes. Or wishing you a happy holiday. I'm just going to do happy holiday. Same kind of thing. I think I will use the real red for this one and then we can put some ribbon with it. So the scripty happy. Let's 
Yes, Roberta, I'm in just outside of Philadelphia. So I understand. Okay. I also can't wait to play with that new Halloween paper with the little witches. Yes, Lizzie, that, that's the best thing about this summer being so hot is I've pretty much stayed inside and played with all my crafting supplies. All right, I did happy. Now I'm going to do two holidays, also in the scripty font. But I think I will change the color to, let's see. Do I want to stay with the green or do I want to stay with the red? What do you guys think? Should we do holidays in the real red so that it matches? Or should we do it in green? He's in Kentucky. The I don't think I've ever been to Kentucky. Lizzie says red. Going back in with the red. Thank you, Lizzie. Oh, we have two reds and two greens. Red, green, red, green. I need a tiebreaker. Quick. <laughs> Tracy's tiebreaker says red. Okay, we're going in with the red. And this is what I do when I'm making my cards. I don't plan anything out. I pull out all my supplies on the table. I look at it. I flip through the catalog and say, that looks pretty cool. I think I could make that. And then I just try to mimic it. I just need to make sure not to touch that vellum for a second. So I'm just going to move it out of the way while I put my stamps away. Always, always clean your stamps before you put them away. I know it's a pain, but they will last a lot longer for you. And I've got this little swirl that I'm going to do in that shaded spruce. All right, how's that look? And then we'll tie another little ribbon. Angela, it's like the blind leading the blind if you're watching me. <laughs> I do not have a formal art degree. Any of that stuff. I just have had a love for all things paper since I was a little child. If it was paper, pens, ink, pencils, anything, I was in love with. This time of year was my favorite time of year as a kid growing up because I loved getting school supplies. Loved it. Even now with my kids, I'm like, ooh, let's get all these pencils and papers and crayons. And my son's like, just grab me five notebooks, mom. <laughs> All right, so while this is setting a little bit, I'm going to, we're going to, again, cut some of this ribbon. My daughter's picked up the bug, though. She really loves to do stamping. Oh, let's see here. Oh, that's cool. You guys know people. That's awesome. 
D, go take a nap. Lizzie, thank you. I do not do my own nails. I can never do my own nails. Um, this one has a little bit of holographic powder on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I, I'm i in the car business, guys. I know. Can you believe it? I sell cars. Well, I don't sell cars anymore. I'm, the, I'm one of the sales managers. So I supervise. Um, and I'm now at a Lexus dealership. So I always want to make sure that my hands look very nice. Oh, who passed away? I missed something there. Oh, Dee lost her niece. I'm sorry to hear that. Cancer. Awful, 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 awful. You know, we spend so much money on drugs so that research companies and so on so that people can have their kicks and not enough money is spent in cancer research. And it's just a shame. My father passed away of cancer. Um, my, um, it just, it just so many people in my life have been affected by cancer and it's just awful. All right. This one came out a little better than the other ribbon. And then if you wanted to, you could pull the tails down instead of having them sideways. And it has that traditional look. And I usually just put a, a little glue dot behind there. Just tug on it a little bit. And a little glue dot behind there. We'll put that into place. And that'll look really cute there. Let's get that out of the way. Let's see here. I have these glue dots. I'm not even kidding you guys. These glue dots are probably like 15 years old. Well, Lizzie, if they made a cure, then the drug companies and the doctors wouldn't be able to make so much money. Now, would they? It's better for people to be sick in today's society. Now, I don't believe that of all people. I think there are genuinely some very good people out there. And they generally want to help people. But unfortunately, you know, drug companies run a lot of what goes on and they make a lot of money. It's a business like any other business. And saving lives doesn't pay. When you cure everybody of cancer, then what? What are they going to move on to? I do suck at them. My my bow making skills are because of this awesome little bow thing that my friend Kim's husband, Rick, made for me. Otherwise, I could not tie a bow. This little doodad, this little doohickey, this makes it so much easier. So I took the kids to our weekly Target run today. Target... I might as well just sign over my whole paycheck to them every week. It's never less than a hundred bucks when I go into Target. And um, we had to get Leah a, a certain color shirt because she's in kindergarten. So they're, you know, testing their skills on knowing colors. So all, every day this week, she has had to wear a different color shirt. So next week, the color she has to wear that we don't own is brown and there's no brown shirts out right now. So I found her a dress or something. Anyway, while we were looking into the um, clothing store, <laughs> D, right? <laughs> while we were looking in the, in the clothing section for, the, she's between like the little kid size and the regular kid size. She's a size between a five and a six right now. So we're in one section. We go to the other section. Anyway, they had these shirts and they're, I don't know if anybody has noticed, but old school like bands, like the vintage looking t-shirts are like coming back. So like in Kohl's, they had like U2 shirts and things like that. And they had this Michael Jackson t-shirt. And so I'm, I totally had to get it for Leah, but I'm like, so let's now because I'm like, Leah has a Michael Jackson shirt and I don't, she doesn't even know who Michael Jackson is. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. D gives all her money to Bruce Monroe. <laughs> Did you put the link to the mentions in? I didn't put any links yet, Roberta, because this is live. So, yes, later I will. 
Um, Lizzie says she needs it. She has an Amazon addiction. Lizzie, I try to stay away from Amazon because if it's free delivery or free shipping, I'm ordering it. That's my biggest pet peeve when I have to pay for shipping. So I do that. Oh, well, I need $50 so I can get free shipping. I probably spent more money than I would have if I would have just paid for the shipping. But I just refuse to pay for shipping. So yeah, the Amazon, it's if you and I don't have Amazon Prime. So you got to get to that certain spot. All right, so I will, once this is dry, this red ink is not completely dry yet, and I don't want to take the heat tool to it, but once that's dry, I'll put little dabs of adhesive back there and glue that one on. So it's kind of simple, but it's cute with the decorative paper back there. This one, I will put some some um, of the Stampin' Up! Diamonds on there. I don't have them in front of me right now, the jewels. <laughs> My name is Deborah, and I'm a shopaholic. I hear you, Deborah. Um, and then this one, same thing. I have that other little bow that I will slap on here and put some gems on here. So we have a couple of cards here. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do for today, guys, because I don't have any more paper pre-cut. And I don't want to do all of that in front of you guys. If you haven't watched the unboxing video, I will link that to you. There is also a stamp layering series that I've started to do. So for those of you who did order the Stamparatus or you have um, issues with multi-step stamping or stamp layering um, stamps, don't hesitate to check that out. I will I will um, do that for you guys too. Um, a lot of these items, like I said, start on September 5th. So keep an eye out. I will link my page. If you are not already a demonstrator, you don't have a demonstrator. If you want to become a demonstrator, you can certainly go through me for that. Um, I did send out to some of you guys that requested the holiday catalog. I only have, I think three left. So if you did not get one to anybody who would like one, again, I only have about three left. So the three people that would want one, send me an email to Nancy Stamps 15, Nancy Stamps 15 at gmail.com. And I will send out the last three catalogs to, that I have. Um, if you would be interested in, in the holiday catalog, if you do not have a demonstrator, um, and this is what it looks like. And these things go on September 5th for you guys. So let me read your guys's questions here. If, this little pickup tool this is a must-have. If you do not have this and the stamp chamois, must-haves, must-haves. You have to get them. Um, let's see here. What else? Oh, and if you guys did any ordering last month through Stampin' Up! and you spent $50, you should have gotten a $5 coupon code. That $5 code you are eligible to redeem in September. So keep an eye. If you did order any Stampin' Up! items from anyone. You should have gotten a $5 code emailed to you that you can spend starting in September. So let's see here. I'm going to read your questions here. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you, Deborah. You guys are awesome. Tracy, thank you so much. Um, Nancy, is the mat you're working on available? Yes. This is the Stampin' Up! Grid Paper Mat. Is that what you're talking about? This guy here? This is, the, this is always available. It's the Stampin' Up! Grid Paper Mat. It's very large. I love it because I can stamp off, make a mess, write notes down. So, yes. Questions regarding the theory of three when it comes to sequence stones or placement. Um, my theory is, Roberta, yes, always use odd numbers. And that's very tough for me because I am a symmetrical kind of person. Oh, I forgot the eye. I got to stick that on that card. I'm a symmetrical person. So to me, I like to make the left the same as the right. So I do when I do placements here, let me just grab my gems here. All right, I have some pearls here. So let's do this little guy with pearls. You try I try to do them. Um, and I'm going to use my little spatula end here. Actually, no, I'm going to use a pointer in. I try to do them in a triangular setting. So here, I know we're going to put the bow there. So I would say that this is like focal point here. So I'm going to try to, this is the, the heavy part. I don't know how to explain that. This is the heavy part of the card down here because you have all of this going on over here. So I would probably only do one over here. 
down here and then do two more up here in the corner. So I would have three. I normally do three or five, just depending on how fancy I'm doing my card. So something simple like this, if I can get it to stick down, I would do three, but you can see that now I've kind of evened out the weight of the card by making more focal up here with the bow and the two um, pearls and one down here in that corner. Does that make sense? So you try to make it a triangular setting or that's what I try to do and I normally do like I said three to five depending on how fancy the card is now if I am doing a wedding card and that's going to be a little over the top I'm going to do more and I scatter them in different sizes and different shapes so in this one for example if I wanted to do a little more I would probably do the smaller ones now so I have these little medium size pearls these come on a little strip on the side and I just cut them down. So since I already have three, I would probably just do two of these guys once I can get them unstuck from each other. And I'm still going to keep that triangle formation. So I have three here and then I'll probably do one more down here because it's much smaller. It's going to attract some attention, but it's not a whole bunch of attention. So now I have um, five on there. And again, they're still in this triangular pattern where it's wider up here and thinner down here as you look at it. Um, okay, what about the Tim Holtz platform? Okay, are you guys talking about the stamping platform? And I always try to add pearls or gems. I love bling on a card. I really think that it stands out. Even a simple card like this. It's basically just paper. When you add those gems or that bling, it just makes it stand up a little bit. Okay, so the Tim Holtz platform. And again, I don't have the Stamparatus to compare it for you guys. But I will compare. I'll give you my honest opinions here between the Tim Holtz platform and the Misty. So I have... An original Misty. Oh, wait, are you guys talking about the glass mat? Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, okay, glass mat. Let me show you what that is. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so here's the, the Tim Holtz glass mat. I'm going to move you guys up a little bit so you can see a little better. A little bit higher there. All right, so... Let me move my stuff off the desk here quick. The Tim Holtz glass mat. And you guys can YouTube. There are quite a few people that have reviewed this glass mat. I just want to move my cards out of the way before I mess them up. Um, Jenny from Craft Test Dunny Dummies did a review on it, I believe. And also... Um, Hedgehog Hollow did a review on them. I ordered mine from scrapbook.com. Um, I'm sorry. No, I did not order it from scrapbook.com. I ordered it from a lady on Amazon um, when they first came out. And the way it was described on Amazon was that I was going to get the mat, the extra sticky mat, the ruler, and scraping tool. Okay, so I didn't really care about any of this stuff. I just wanted the mat. And her price was like, I want to say $10 more than everybody else. But she said she had it in stock. Be and I figured, okay, for $10 more, I'm going to get the extra nonstick mat, the cleaner and the ruler, or whatever you want to call this, the straight edge. And when it came, it did not come with these three extra items. So when I emailed her, she had said to me, um, oh, that was a misprint. You're not supposed to get the three extra items. Um, and I said, well, I feel like I paid $10 extra for them. So I want them. So she did send them to me. Um, eventually it did take a couple months, but I did get them. I do know the mat is on back order now. Yes, definitely. I do have to have everything, Deborah. It's terrible. I, just to give you guys some background, if you do not know, um, 
I am a single mom, divorced twice, two kids. So I don't have a husband. I don't have a spouse. I do everything by myself. So I don't have to answer to anyone, which is really nice. But that's also a curse because I don't have anybody watching me and saying, do you really need that? Should you be ordering that? <laughs> um, but it, it, it is nice for some things. But sometimes I wish maybe there would be somebody to kind of reel me in and say, yeah, Nancy, you don't need that. But anyway, so the glass mat, I will tell you, my desk is a glass desk. I got it from Ikea. They do not make this desk anymore. I don't do a lot of mixed media. So why I was attracted to this mat is because my little craft mat underneath, as you can see, started to get stained and dirty and dingy. I mean, there is ink stains all over it. So I put this, this non-stick mat over top of it, which is great. But even this is my second one. Eventually, these also get dirty, dingy stained, especially when you are using like alcohol inks and things. They do get in there and stain. Um, and I was afraid of like cutting it up. So I got the glass mat. It is very large. It is very heavy. If you're going to get it, make sure you put it in a place where you are going to keep it permanently. You do not want this guy being picked up and moved around. It does have little rubber feet on the bottom, so it does stay in place. Every once in a while, um, I do move it out of the way. If I'm going to be um, doing something I feel like might break this, um, anything extra heavy duty, but very rarely. My um, non-stick mat has pulled up in the corner. I've tried to clean it. My friend Kim, who also has the same thing, she just pulled her off and used it separately. She doesn't even leave her mat on there. That's the only complaint I have is everybody I know who has this, their mat has curled up in the corner and they've pulled it off. But I love it because it is very sturdy. You can cut on it. You can ink on it. You can paint on it. You can do everything. Now for stamping, I do like to have a little gift. So I will put my stamping grid mat underneath there. So it is nice. And I know a lot of you guys are working out of a spare bedroom, working out of your dining room, um, and you you have a nice table or desk under there. This is a nice way to protect that and to keep the mess kind of contained in your little area, if that makes sense. So D is saying May May has it for a decent price. Very good. Let's see. D bought Christopher's craft mat. Just doesn't, just don't know if I need the last one. I think it depends on what kind of a stamper you are, D. I'm not really heavy into mixed media, but recently I've really been doing a lot with alcohol ink and I find it to be a lifesaver. Uh, the water ink, water coloring, the smush technique, all of those things can all be done on my glass mat and it is super easy cleanup. I just spray it down with some Windex and wipe it up. Any other questions you guys have that I can answer? My son is down here now, Xavier, and he goes, yeah, mom, I tell you when you don't need stuff. He actually said to me, this rotten child of mine, mom, when you die, I'm going to have a bonfire and burn all that paper. Isn't that awful? Awful, awful kid. That's okay. Leah's going to inherit it all. Yes, um, Leah and I actually did just do a card, but you guys are going to have to wait to see it. It is a Christmas card. It's actually for, it's going to be for uh, Creative Vision Stamps design team. So yes, Leah loves to help out. So we will definitely do a Stampin' Up! one with her helping out. Well, guys, I think we'll call it a night. If you guys have any other questions, of course, you can post them down below. Um, any comments. If you like this video, you can scroll all the way up and give me a thumbs up. I will also link my Stampin' Up! page for those of you who are not demonstrators that would like a demonstrator. All of these items go on sale September 5th. I would love to be your demonstrator and help you um, order. Most of you guys are already subscribers. That's why you know that I'm on live. If you're not a subscriber, I'll put a little link in the corner there for you guys. Leah just turned five. She just went to, just started kindergarten. Okay, guys, and don't forget to share, share, share. If you're not on my Facebook page, it's Nancy Stamps 15 on Facebook, Nancy Stamps 15 on Instagram. And I love you guys. You're awesome.
Have a wonderful Labor Day tomorrow. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.